Hi, Professor Aquarimax here. Is Spirostreptus species 1, also known as the globular millipede, the best pet invertebrate? Well, today we'll look into the housing and care for this species, as well as discuss the pros and cons of keeping it so that you can come to your own conclusions. So to introduce Spirostreptus species 1, this is an African species of a genus that is full of lots of different species, which may be part of the reason that it's only assigned a number. There are many, many species in this genus, but Spirostreptus species 1, also known as the globular millipede, as I mentioned, is interesting in that it will sometimes coil into a globular shape as a defensive posture. Many, many millipedes will coil into more of a flat cinnamon roll shape or spiral, but the uh, Spirostreptus species 1 will often approximate sort of a globe shape, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. They are one of the longer millipedes in the hobby. They can get at least six inches long and possibly longer. So there are millipedes that are much, much bigger and much longer than it is, but it's on the larger side as far as length goes. It's not a very girthy millipede. It stays fairly slender. And they are widely available captive bred. At least the specimens that I know of in the United States are captive bred. So that is a plus, of course. And this species is not at all difficult to take care of. So now let's get into housing and care. As far as housing is concerned, this millipede can be housed like many other millipedes uh, in a container of appropriate size. A plastic tub with a few holes drilled in it for ventilation is perfectly acceptable home for it. You'll want to cover those vent holes with fine uh, fabric uh, in order to prevent the entrance of fungus gnats or other pests and uh, fill it with appropriate substrate. The substrate that I like to use consists of one part of organic compost or organic potting soil, one part soaked oak or alder pellets, they become the consistency of wet sawdust when they're soaked, and one third fallen hardwood leaves. I'm fortunate that I can collect these in my backyard. I sanitize all of these by heating them to approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour before I use them. I crush up the leaves uh, in order to help them decompose more quickly and in order to provide more surface area for the millipedes to eat them. I then add a little bit of calcium powder. Now I'm replacing half of the substrate in this container uh, because periodically that's something that you should do to enable the millipedes to get the nutrition that they need. You don't want the substrate to get too old. Once it becomes largely millipede frass or waste, it needs to be replaced periodically. So you'll want to replace at least half of the substrate about every three to six months, depending, or at least top it off with fresh leaves and things like that. I want to take a moment to thank our patrons at Patreon. Without your help, there's a lot that we do on this channel that we couldn't do. And I'm excited to announce that we've reached our 25th patron on, on Patreon, which is pretty exciting if you ask me. So we are really appreciative of your support and the support that all of you offer, whether it's through just watching the channel or purchases that you make, it is all appreciated. So thank you very much. Now let's talk more about Spirostreptus species one. That is essentially what the millipedes will eat for, for food. That should be their primary food source is this substrate. However, supplementary foods can be offered as well. Uh, just about anything you would give isopods can be eaten by these millipedes. So pieces of fruits and vegetables, things like zucchini, cucumber, carrot, fruits like apple or, or mango, um, peas, soft green beans, just about any soft vegetable or fruit, something that the millipedes can eat. I prefer to make sure that they are well peeled and or washed very well, and I often use organic produce. But as long as you wash it and peel it, it should be safe in most cases. I also provide protein in the form of fish food pellets or things like Rapashi Bug Burger or Rapashi Morning Wood. Those kinds of foods uh, can offer a little bit extra nutrition and protein, and I do periodically replenish the uh, ground eggshells for calcium for the millipedes as well. I'll put links in the description to the substrate ingredients and to the supplemental foods that I offer so you can check those out as well. As far as hydration goes, millipedes don't need a water dish per se. You just need to make sure that the substrate is uh, properly moist. 
which basically means that when you squeeze a handful of the substrate, if drops of water are oozing out of it, it's too damp. And if you squeeze it and you can feel a little bit of moisture on your hand, it's just right. And if you squeeze it and it feels fairly dry, it's too dry. And you can have a moisture gradient. In other words, you can have a damper side and a slightly drier side in the enclosure. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That can be a good thing, in fact, to do that. But you want to make sure that at least half the substrate is moist enough so that when you squeeze it, you can feel a little moisture on your hand, but not much more moisture than that. And that is a good level to maintain. Now, when you do change the substrate, it's important to remember that there could be eggs or very small millipedes in there. So every time that you change the substrate, it's important to save it for a period of time to make sure that you're not disposing of millipede eggs, for example. If you put it in an appropriate container and keep it for a month or two and then check it to make sure that you're not throwing any millipedes away, that's very important. It's also important not to disturb the millipedes when they are molting because they will periodically burrow into the substrate especially when they're younger happens more often and molt under that substrate and if they are disturbed during that period it can harm them so it's best not to dig into the substrate when it can be avoided a lot of people ask about what is the preferred uh, temperature range for millipedes and for most millipedes, it tends to be similar. And fortunately, it tends to be the room temperatures at which humans are comfortable. So if you're comfortable, your millipedes probably are too. Somewhere in the low to high 70s is probably great. If it dips down into the 60s Fahrenheit or in, up into the high 80s Fahrenheit is probably fine too. But people ask if they should provide extra heat for their millipedes in the form of a heat mat under the enclosure or something like that because they're from Africa. In general, the answer is no, because one, uh, animals that burrow will often burrow down when they want to cool down. And if they hit a heat mat when they're burrowing down, they can, uh, cause, it can cause harm to them. Also, uh, generally, because they are burrowing animals, they tend to be in areas where it is cooler because it's cooler underground. And so they don't need uh, the warm temperatures that they would necessarily find if they were at the surface all the time because they are burrowing animals. So they're really pretty easy to maintain as far as temperature goes as well. And those are the basics of care for Spirostrepta species 1. I haven't bred this species yet as most of the individuals I have are just maturing now. I have one individual that I've had for a number of years as an adult and but it's been alone for most of that time as an adult so um, as these younger ones mature, I hope to be seeing some babies soon, but like most millipedes, there's not a lot you need to do if you're taking good care of them um, for them to reproduce. Some species are more challenging to get to reproduce, but this is one of those species that if you keep it well and you have males and females, you're most likely going to get offspring when the millipedes are properly mature. So I look forward to that uh, time, which should be happening quite soon. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this species. Some of these are pros that apply to most millipedes. One is that they're very low maintenance. That tends to be true of most millipedes. You can leave them for approximately a week, sometimes longer, without any care if you make sure that the substrate is properly moistened and it is a, an appropriate substrate in terms of nutrition. They, they will be fine for a week or so without uh, any supervision or, or care at all during that period of time. And generally care only takes a few minutes a week. Changing the substrate's a little more involved, but it doesn't have to happen very often. So pretty simple pets. Another pro is that you can handle them. Uh, millipedes tend to be pretty easy to handle as long as you're gentle with them and they can't really hurt you. They can release a repugnatorial fluid as a defensive mechanism. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about cons. But in general, if you wash your hands, it's not a big deal. And if you handle them gently, they're not as likely to do it. Um, millipedes can sometimes nibble on your skin. It's not painful and it's not harmful. It generally means that they're just hungry and might need a little protein. It might be time to give them a little uh, fish food or something like that to take care of their protein needs, but it, it doesn't hurt and it's not going to break the skin or anything like that. And they're just fascinating to watch. For me, one of the most fascinating things about keeping millipedes is that you can, as you watch them crawl, the, the wave patterns in their legs is quite hypnotic, quite fascinating to see. And even people who might be uncomfortable with invertebrates 
might actually admit that they find that kind of fascinating. So that can be a way to uh, help them maybe accept invertebrate pets a little more. And a lot of people find uh, millipedes rather cute. Not everybody, but a lot of people do, especially with some gentle exposure. Millipedes tend to be very uh, communal. In other words, you can keep a group of millipedes together without any problems, and it's very easy to breed them as, as a consequence of that. So there are a lot of reasons why you might want to keep millipedes, but there are a few reasons why you might not want to keep millipedes. One is the repugnatorial fluid, or defensive fluid that I mentioned before. Now, most millipedes, when they are disturbed, when they feel stressed or, or threatened, they will release these fluids that are apparently distasteful, though I personally have never tasted them. They also have a distinctive odor to them, which is somewhat unpleasant, and a color which will stain skin if it's left on your skin for any period of time. So you wouldn't want to put them in your mouth or anything like that, but as long as you wash them off your skin, you should be fine. I've never had a problem with it. You might want to be careful just in case it's something that you are particularly sensitive to, but just wash it off and anytime you handle your millipedes, whether or not they release that repugnatorial fluid, you should be washing your hands anyway immediately after handling your millipedes. So it's easily dealt with and if you are gentle with your millipedes, they tend not to do it, but if they are surprised or stressed, they will release that. Uh, as far as handling goes, another con is that millipedes are somewhat fragile. So if you're handling them gently, they're probably not going to be harmed at all. But if you were to drop a millipede from you're standing up holding a millipede over a hard floor and you were to drop it on a hard floor, you could damage that millipede. It could hurt or kill the millipede. So you have to be careful. It is best to handle them over a softer surface such as carpet or even just sit down on your floor on your carpet when you're handling them and hold them over their container something like that so that they don't have far to fall if they do happen to fall uh, that can help uh, alleviate any worries about uh, the millipedes being damaged when they fall and I would say that the main disadvantage of keeping any kind of millipede including Spirostreptus species 1 is that their substrate can attract fungus gnats and as you know if you've heard some of my other videos fungus gnats tend to be attracted to almost any creature that lives in a soil type substrate if it's kept moist like it is for millipedes and there are things that you can do to combat that one is to keep springtails with your millipedes springtails tend to eat the same foods that fungus gnats do and that tends to help outcompete them you can also make sure that you are when you ventilate your millipedes container that you cover the ventilation with very very fine mesh that the fungus gnats cannot go in and out of that can help as well and there are other things that you can look into one thing that i have been experimenting with and it seems to give good results is mosquito bits and i'll put a link in the description to those mosquito bits these are basically um, granules that are soaked in water and then you can use that water when you are moistening your millipedes substrate and this contains a natural bacterium that um, attacks uh, fungus gnat larvae. It is very specific to things like fungus gnat and mosquito larvae and does not attack millipedes, does not damage them. And so you can look into uh, using that as a way to combat fungus gnats as well. And those are about all I can think of in terms of cons. Spirostreptus millipedes are quite fascinating. They're fairly large, so they're pretty impressive. So. What do you think? Are Spirostreptus species 1's the best pet invertebrate? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.